Uh, we're now going to move to the uh, general questions uh, which were interrupted earlier in the day. Uh, and I'm going to pick up at question number five, Neil Bibby. To ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking to improve performance on Scotland's railways. Uh, Minister Hamza Youssef. The Scottish Government has written to ScotRail Alliance requesting an improvement plan. Frankly, the performance has not been to the level that I and we expect it. Uh, this plan will provide evidence on how the ScotRail Alliance intend to return performance to contracted target levels. Neil Bibby. Official ScotRail statistics show that in the run-up to 20th of August, 24 out of 75 services were actually late more often than they were on time. Only 38.7% of trains to Paisley Canal arrived on time, 29% to Dalmuir, 25% to Mulgay, and only 1 in 10 trains to Arbroath, Ardrossan Harbour and High Street Glasgow arrived on time. This government signed a contract with Abellio that gives them millions of pounds of taxpayers' money every week. It's not good enough for the Minister just to blame ScotRail and Network Rail. Can he tell us what percentage of trains arriving on time does he think is acceptable? And what guarantees will he give passengers today that services will be significantly improved? And if so, by when? Minister. Let me try to give some reassurances to the member uh, where I can. As I have said in my previous answer, I don't think the performance or the PPM levels are to the standard that we expect them. Uh, that's why I've instructed an improvement plan uh, comes to me and that uh, changes are made. But let me try to give some perspective on what the member has said. Uh, the target that ScotRail or Bellio have is 91.3% in terms of performance uh, and the PPM target. Uh, they were just 1.6% behind that. 1.6. They were at 89.7%. Just for some perspective, because I know the member needs some of that perspective. When Labour had the franchise in 2005, they were at 84%. Oh. 6% lower than they currently <laughs> are. So just to give some perspective as well, on the Glasgow South line, the PPM percentage is 97%. On the Gurukh Wims Bay, I know a service that the member uses himself, it's at 99%. So yes, there are certainly improvements to be made. That's why an improvement plan has been put in place. But yes, let's put this in perspective. The railways are not at collapse. It is not chaos as he paints. I know Neil Bibby is usually a ray of eternal sunshine and positivity. I would request okay, him Minister. to think positively about some of this. And look, the improvement plan has been requested. I'm sure there will be improvements made, and you will see some action on that. So let's get some perspective on this. Yes, the PPM target's been missed by 1.6%. I'll certainly Minister. be pushing ScotRail further. Let's see what that improvement plan yeah, has yeah. been. Linda Fabiani. <laughs> Thank you, Presiding Officer. I do intend to write uh, to the Minister about this, but I'd like to place on record some of the terrible travelling experiences I'm getting reports of from people on the East Cobb Ride to Glasgow Line. And, and um, would the Minister make sure that when I do send on this letter, letter detailing some of the experiences relayed to me over the last few weeks, that he will very quickly have a look at it and raise that with ScotRail along with other issues? Minister. Yes, of course I will. And it's important to say that anybody can pick out a week's of statistics or a month of statistics. Uh, but actually, over the year, as I say, the performance has not been what I would expect it to be. But 89.7% in terms of the PPM, in terms of the punctuality, in terms of the performance, uh, is in the right trajectory. Uh, but look, we need to get to the targets that are set in the contract, the improvement plans in place, and hopefully that will make a difference to the constituents in East Kilbride. Colin Beattie. Can I ask the, the Minister what measures the Scottish Government has taken to expand passenger capacity on Scotland's railways? Minister. Yes, the member raises an important point. Of course, the good news story on the railways is that the, 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 the popularity of the railways has grown by 27 per cent since 2007. So more people want to use our railways. But of course, uh, the, same si uh, the, the different side of that same coin is that, uh, of course, we have capacity issues in the network. So in order to try to address that, uh, there's a number of uh, things that are in the, in the franchise and within the contract. Uh, from a in April 2015, when the, when the franchise was taken on by Scott Rayleigh Bellio, there was 287 trains within the fleet. Uh, that will increase to 336 by 2019. Uh, there will be 70 new Hitachi trains, uh, more than 40% extra seating planned uh, by 20, uh, end of 2018, 2019. And there's a whole host of other measures that we're taking in order to improve capacity, because it is a big issue 
I'm active on social media. I see a lot of people tweeting me about the capacity issues, and there are improvements being made. A new fleet of trains coming in, which will help with that. But I can provide more detail to the member, uh, perhaps in some written correspondence. Question number six, Alison Harris. To ask the Scottish Government what its position is on the reported views of businesses regarding slow broadband speeds in the Grangemouth area. Cabinet Secretary Fergus Ewing. Officer, the majority of homes and businesses in Grangemouth are served by commercial broadband services and we will continue to press commercial providers to deliver the best possible service to as many homes and businesses as is possible. The Scottish Government's investment in the digital Scotland Superfast broadband programme has seen two new cabinets installed recently to serve areas of Grangemouth that wouldn't have been reached commercially. The Scottish Government is committed to ensuring superfast broadband access for 100% of premises by 2021. We intend to deliver new public investment via new procurements from next year, which will further improve broadband availability and speeds across Scotland. Alison Harris. Does the Minister agree with me that it is incredible in 2016 that in the industrial hub of Scotland, businesses are reporting that they have been told that the best option was radio-based broadband beamed across the Forth all the way from Clackmannanshire? Minister. Uh, well, what I would say is that, as I said in the answer, that, which if the member listened, referred to commercial services. Now, commercial services have provided broadband in cities throughout Britain. Uh, unless I missed something, I haven't actually heard the UK government stating that it is a public obligation of the taxpayer to supplant, to supplant the commercial activities of companies. That's not really a proposition that one expects to hear from the Conservative Party. But despite, the, despite that fact, I can inform members that under the programme in Scotland, the Digital Scotland Superfast Broadband, 7,000 homes and businesses are being connected every week. An investment of £410 million is being made uh, to make up for the fact that the UK's ambition is far less than that of the Scottish Government. Angus MacDonald. Thank you, President Officer. I had discussions with a senior official from Falkirk Council on this very subject just last Friday, and he advised me that they're actively pursuing wireless broadband options for my constituency. What can the Scottish Government do to assist Falkirk Council in their efforts to improve broadband provision in Grangemouth and the wider Falkirk District and source alternative technology to allow better broadband speeds for local businesses? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, we, we do work with uh, Falkirk Council and other bodies to help extend digital connectivity in the area. A range of technologies will be required to deliver our shared broadband ambitions and Community Broadband Scotland is already supporting a number of communities to procure wireless broadband solutions and the Scottish Government is also supporting trials of innovative TV white space technology in Orkney, for example, which could support wireless broadband delivery in future. I will ensure that the, the good points that my, my colleague Mr Macdonald raises are followed up with Falkirk Council in the coming days to discuss their plans in more detail. Richard Lyle. Thank you, President Norsir. Is the Cabinet Secretary as tired as I am of hearing the Tories complain about the Scottish Government's approach to digital connectivity when the Tory Government at Westminster doesn't even have an ambitious a target for rollout as exists here in Scotland? Fergus, Cabinet Secretary. Well, Tory fatigue is just one of the malaises that we must thaw here in the <laughs> Scottish Parliament. But to answer the, the question, the Scottish Government has made clear that we intend to go far further than UK Government in digital connectivity. Uh, the UK's ambition is lesser, and their USO will deliver speeds of just 10 megabits per second, far below uh, the super-fast target in Scotland. Uh, so what we are doing in Scotland, I think, uh, uh, although we've got a long way to go yet, as we admit, uh, will be far more ambitious than what uh, our counterparts seek to deliver down south. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. That concludes general questions. Oh, point of order, Mr Findlay. Uh, President Officer, today in an answer to an inspired parliamentary question from Gil Patterson, the Cabinet Secretary Michael Matheson, Matheson announced a review of undercover policing in Scotland since the regulation of Investigatory Powers Scotland Act 2000 came into force. President Officer, I have been raising the issues of unethical and illegal undercover policing for the last few years and have called for a full and independent public inquiry. 
the same as is happening in England and Wales. <coughs> Excuse me. What has been announced today is not a public inquiry. The review announced today fails to address the concerns of victims prior to the year 2000. The Pitchford Inquiry in England and Wales will look back to 1968. The review fails to provide an avenue for victims to prevent their evidence and to hear from witnesses, and the review will not look at the activities of undercover officers during events like the anti-poll tax campaign, the miners' strike, and the peak period when thousands of construction workers were blacklisted. President Officer, can you use your good office to ensure that the Cabinet Secretary comes to Parliament next week to make a statement on this review so MSPs can ask questions on behalf of their constituents? Sneaking this out at the tail of the week in an inspired PQ with no opportunity for questions simply will not do. Can I thank Mr Finlay for his point of order? He, Mr Finlay makes a number of points, a number of questions about a government statement, a government announcement today. Uh, there are clearly questions that need to be put to the government, uh, and I would ask the government to uh, take cognizance, or other business managers to take cognizance, as they would of any other request. And Mr Finlay can make use of his own resources, put down written questions, as he would with any other matter, and has a, can make full, full utilisation of all the parliamentary's, Parliament's facilities in doing so. The point has been noted. It's not a point of order, however. We now move to decision time. And there are six questions as a result of today's business. The first question is that Amendment 1580.1 in the name of Murdo Fraser, which seeks to amend Motion 1582 in the name of Derek Mackay on reforming local taxation, be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We're not agreed. Parliament will move to a vote and members may cast their vote now. The result of the vote on Amendment 158.0.1 in the name of Murdo Fraser is as follows. Yes, 64. No, 63. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore agreed. The next question, the next question is that Amendment 158.0.2 in the name of Jackie Bailey, which seeks to amend Motion 158.0 in the name of Derek Mackay, be agreed. Are we all agreed? No. We are not agreed. Parliament will move to a vote and members may cast their votes now. The result of the vote on Amendment 1580.2 in the name of Jackie Bailey is as follows. Yes, 34. No, 93. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. The next question... The next question... The next question is that Amendment 1580.3... Members, please. Please, some order, please. Some order, please. The next question is that Amendment 1580.3 in the name of Andy Whiteman, which seeks to amend the, amendment, the motion in the name of Derek Mackay, be agreed. Are we all agreed? No. We are not agreed. Parliament will move to a vote, and members may cast their votes now.
<laughs> the result of the vote on Amendment 1580.3 in the name of Andy Whiteman is as follows. Yes, 6. No, 121. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. The next question is that Motion 1580 in the name of Derek Mackay as amended be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are not agreed. Parliament will move to a vote and members may cast their votes now. The result of the vote on motion 1580 in the name of Derek Mackay as amended is as follows. Yes, 63. No, 63. And there were no abstentions. As the vote is tied, as the vote is tied and the Parliament has been unable to reach a view on the motion, I have to exercise my casting vote. And in line with the approach taken by my predecessors and outlined in members in my recent letter, I will cast against the motion. The motion is therefore not agreed. We will now move to the next motion question. And the question is the question is that motion 1581 in the name of Fiona Hislop. Sorry, beg your pardon. The question is that one amendment 1581.1 in the name of Rachel Hamilton, which seeks to amend motion 1581 in the name of Fiona Hislop, be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are all agreed. The final question is that amendment that motion 1581 in the name of Fiona Hislop as amended on securing Scotland's position as the perfect stage for events be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are all agreed. That concludes decision time. <laughs>